On your Thursday episode of Locked On Raptors, it's the three most exciting words in the Locked On Raptors extended universe. We're playing What's More Likely. You are Locked On Raptors, your daily Toronto Raptors podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on? And welcome to another episode of Locked On Raptors, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Thursday, May the 23rd. And I'm your host, Sean Woodley. I've been covering the Toronto Raptors now for 10 seasons on various platforms. You can find all my work over on the Hell website at Woodley Sean. You can find the show on Instagram at Locked On Raptors. And of course, you can join us the Locked On Raptors Discord server. The link is in the description of the podcast. It's free to join. And it's a great little community we got building around the show. Lots of playoff talk. Lots of talk about the Raptors offseason. Lots of me swatting down terrible trade ideas like I'm primed to Kembe Matumbo. It's a lovely thing. Come hang in the Discord. Free to join. Link in the description as always. We'd love to see you there. Of course, you can find the show for free on your favorite podcast apps. Follow, subscribe, rate, review, tell a friend. Always appreciate it when you support the show on the audio side of things. You can also go to YouTube and subscribe to the show. When you do that, hit the notification bell button, and you will get a heads up via push notification every single time the show is about to premiere or go live, which is a wonderful thing. Also a wonderful thing is any episode where we get to talk to our pal Jamar Hines, and it's even more doubly special when we're playing a round of what's more likely our favorite little parlor game here on the show, uh, where I dig into a, a couple of extreme outcomes and a certain topic, and we talk about which of those two extreme outcomes is the most likely to actually take place. And we'll do that with a trio of things today, talking some all-star, all-NBA stuff with Scotty Barnes and the other Raptors core players, uh, Jakob Pertl's outlook for next season, and of course, the WNBA coming to Toronto. Before we get into all of it, though, we got to bring him in. Jamar Hines from Raptors Republic is here. Jamar, how's it going, buddy? Yeah, I'm doing good. I was about to bring up the WNBA. It's a pretty special day in Toronto. Obviously, that um, press conference is going on right now with the official announcement. Um, Scotty's there. Kyle's there. Kyle surprised me, actually. But yeah, he's hmm. there. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Really cool day in Toronto. And getting it team in 2026 so can't wait for that pretty exciting stuff two years feels like a long time away but i'm sure it will go extremely fast because time is nothing if not unrelenting uh we will today dig into three what's more likely scenarios jamar as uh you know we talked kind of been a wide range of things related to this off season next season and all that good stuff but let's begin with our first what's more likely scenario of the day jamar and it's WNBA themed. It's big day. It's WNBA day in Toronto as per the mayor of Toronto. So let's get to a WNBA themed question off the top. Number one here, what's more likely? The Toronto WNBA team makes the finals in the WNBA by 2030 or the Toronto Raptors make an NBA finals by then. What is more likely? Jamar, I put this to you. <laughs> uh comments are gonna hate me i feel like, I, I feel like going the fun route and just just saying the wmba team is more likely mm -hmm. to make the hey there's twice as few teams fewer teams yeah. uh with the rap uh with the wmba team coming it would be a 14 team league there should be more expansion after that i would think but that's a 14 team league and the raptors are in a 30 team league so just by numbers you would think it would be easier to make the finals in the WNBA as opposed to the NBA. That's what I'm going off of. I'm not, this is not me being super pessimistic about the current outlook or whatever. I'm just simply going off numbers because we don't, obviously, we don't even know who's on the WNBA team yet. I was the other day, I was trying to figure out who their first draft pick would be like when the Raptors uh, drafted David Stoudemire because mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't be the Paige Becker's year and because she's probably she's probably coming out next year and I don't think it would be the Juju Watkins year because she's only a freshman mm -hmm. so yeah we don't know who's going to be on that team obviously and I don't know I just figure you know the, the Raptors there's a lot of steps that have to be taken for them to get to a finals and they've only been to one NBA finals in 30 years, 29 years. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I'm just going off numbers. So, sorry, don't hate me. I'm just going to go the fun route. I'm just going to pick the WNBA team. 
You? Look, I don't think anyone's going to hate you. I think it's very exciting to think of the WNBA team going to the finals. We've seen the Raptors there. That's old hat. That's old news. That's fine. Been there, done that. Um, yeah, look, it's. I think the arguments in favor of either of these extreme outcomes are, are kind of interesting. The Raptors obviously have more runway to do it. They've got this season and next season before the WNBA team begins to play. Uh, and so, you know, that is part of the calculus here. Are they going to make a finals in the next two years? I would say probably not. And so, you know, you kind of wash those two years out, you know, then you'll have, I think it's fascinating because you'll be looking at the sort of peak of the Scotty Barnes era, one would think between 2026 and 2030. Like that's kind of, if everything goes well, you're going to have prime Scotty Barnes in his mid to late twenties. You'll have Emmanuel quickly, ideally on the team who knows about RJ Barrett, but he certainly has made a case to be around for the long haul as well. And of course, you know, we have no idea. It's the NBA. Things change real quick. And, you know, bloody Devin Booker could be on the Raptors for all we know. Um, probably not. Wait, but that'd be wait, wait, wouldn't wait. That, wouldn't hey, that be sweet? Wait. What? Hold on. If Devin Booker's on the Raptors, like, would he have to make up with the Raptor? Like, because <laughs> there's that whole thing with the free throws. I, I think, think the Raptor, I think they're, yeah. I think the Raptors are like last on Devin Booker. Like he's got some real beef with that Raptor. It's like the most hated mascot of all time in Devin Booker's hierarchy here. So I don't know about that. I'm joking. Go on. I know that's that's a very very astute point that I did not uh, envision being a source for contention when I brought up Devin Booker's name or just randomly <laughs> among all the stars in the league. Uh, but you're right. You know the Raptor himself might actually have like power of veto over a Devin Booker trade or signing. Um, I don't know what's in his contract. I'm sure he's got all kinds of stuff. Now 30 years into the gig, he's probably got all kinds of stuff baked in that he has power over. But um, the point is, uh, yeah, the Raptors. I think you know you would think that they're sort of peak of their winning window would be during this era where the WNBA team is kind of just getting rolling right and we talked about this last week with Chelsea late I, like I don't know exactly what to expect and sort of how quickly to envision the WNBA team being good right they figure to have a high pick in that 2026 draft and we know how much college talent is coming out every single year uh and obviously the following years after that if they're struggling if they they they're a losing team in year 1 then they'll be right in the mix for a Juju Watkins or a Flage Johnson in the following year um you know there's all sorts of interesting things that can go down between now and then that would sort of um you know we, we don't know what the league's sort of rules on expansion teams and where they can draft are going to be a million different things are going to dictate who is able to actually play for the WNBA team early on. But as we talked about, it probably won't be a sort of typical expansion team thing where you just expect to be bad for many years out of the gate as you build up a roster, just because the WNBA is so flush with talent and there are so many players who aren't even in the league who are talented, you'll be able to assemble yourself a pretty competitive roster, one would think. And then if you can sort of build that thing out with high-end talent taken in the draft coming out of college, then, hey, maybe by 2030, the WNBA team in Toronto is actually cooking in a 14 team league where, like you said, math is powerful and there's just like a better chance of making it to a finals. Maybe you're at the part where, um, you know, the aces are aging out of their, you know, curve of dominance or whatever other next team is kind of aging out. Um, you know, the Liberty, obviously, like that, 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 that's, you know, it's a fascinating one. I, not to toot my own horn or anything. I think I made a very good fun. What's more likely to start off here <laughs> to answer the original question. I think I will also say the WNBA just by a smidge because of the math and just making a finals in the NBA is extremely hard. But I do think that it's interesting because the Raptors should be at a point around then where they should be, you know, sort of expecting and hoping to be in finals if everything goes well and Scotty right. Barnes becomes the player that we all hope and think Scotty Barnes can become. Um, any parting shots on this first? What's more likely before we move on? Um, I, I guess the only thing I would uh, going through my head right now is what they're going to name the team. Obviously, yeah. uh, there is a lot of discussion with that a couple of weeks ago when it was announced and, you know, I heard a lot of names that I don't like, but I can't really criticize too much because I have no creative bones in my body and I haven't come <laughs> up with a name myself. So yeah, that's the only thing I got. <laughs> 
Yeah. Um, look, Toronto Smoke, still leader in the clubhouse. It's uh, it, Teresa oh, yeah, Rash said today she's open for she suggestions. Said. People, okay. I'm not going to go send it to her because I'm not embarrassing. But um, if anyone wants to send Teresa Rash Toronto Smoke with my name attached to it, by all means, happy to be the person who named the team and wear that crown around for the rest of time. Um, that will do it for our first What's More Likely. I mentioned Scotty Barnes and his ascent to becoming the player we all hope he can become. That very much could happen next season, and we will get into the possibility of him making an All-NBA team and another sort of potentially unlikely thing that could happen with the other core players of the Raptors with our second What's More Likely coming up in just one second here. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. You got to go check out LinkedIn Jobs because it's not just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the place to hire if you run a small business. You want to find quality professionals. You just do. It's a challenging thing, but it's a really important thing, and it's a difficult thing to find time for when you run a small business. I've been a hiring manager before. It's really difficult. You kind of have no time for anything else, and when you do run a small business, uh, you have a lot of other things on the go. Hiring can go to the back burner. Maybe you don't put the right time into it. You're not hiring the right people. Don't worry, because LinkedIn Jobs can help you find those people easily and for free. Hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate with, within 24 hours when they post their job on LinkedIn. LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire, so let them do it for you. Two and a half million small businesses are using LinkedIn for hiring. You should too. Post your job free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Back at it here with Jamar Hines. Apologies to the video viewers. The first segment, Jamar's camera was being squirrely. Not his fault. It's technology's fault. They're little goblins in the wires. So uh, we're good now. He's moving. It's not like a little Choppy. stop motion animation yeah. anymore. It is all good. All right. Uh, let's continue on here, Jamar, with our what's more likelies for the day. Uh, the next one I got here for you mentioned Scotty Barnes uh, and you know what we are all hoping for him to do next season. This one is tied into that. What's more likely, number two, Scotty Barnes makes an all-NBA team next season or one of R.J. Barrett or Emmanuel Quickly is named an all-star next season. Of course, we saw the all-NBA teams drop yesterday. Scotty Barnes nowhere to be found in the voting, as is it's to be expected. He played fewer mm -hmm. than 65 games, so he was not eligible. Um, might he have slid in above a DeMar DeRozan who got exactly one third place vote? Who's to say? Probably not. That's fine. Um, you know, he's 22 years old. There's lots of Scotty Barnes all NBA votes to be had over the course of the rest of his career. We also saw yesterday the ringer put together a, uh, a piece on their sort of top 25 players under 25 and Scotty Barnes came in at 13. And if he is in fact a top 13, 25 under 25 guy, then hey, that, that sort of portends potential all NBA upside as well. And so I think this question is timely and interesting. What do you got here, Jamar? Scotty Barnes makes an All-NBA team next season in his fourth year, or one of Quickly or Barrett makes the jump and becomes an All-Star next season. In an Eastern Conference that, you know, maybe there's some All-Star spots to be had. Does Donovan Mitchell stick around in Cleveland? Is Trey Young going to be on the Hawks or in the Eastern Conference anymore? Uh, Julius Randle as well, kind of a big question. All guys who made the team this past season, along with one Scotty Barnes. Uh, what you got here? What's more likely? Yeah, you're kind of making the case for me in your question. Um I think quickly has an outside chance of being an all-star next mm -hmm. season. Mm -hmm. Cause when you look at the guards in the East, it's not really all that deep. You mentioned, we don't know what's going to happen with Mitchell um, and Trey young Atlanta's trying to trade him. And tr first of all, Trey young has been kind of been snubbed from all-star games anyway. Um, injury replacement tray it's like his his, his moniker it's, it's been kind it's been <laughs> kind of dame <laughs> it's been kind of weird with tray speaking of dame um i mean this was a weird season for dame in milwaukee uh mm -hmm. i'm trying to just go through guards in my head of who would be who would be a lot who was on the who was guards on the all-star team this year it was well, lillard dame, dame, it was, dame was a starter. Jared brunson Trey Young Brunson, was Brunson's a replacement, a Donovan Mitchell, yeah. Brunson is a lock. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. I just I feel like 
if everything were to lay out right, I think quickly has a better chance of being a top 25, top 24 uh, player than Scotty does of being a top 15. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel that, you know, that's a big leap from all-star to all-NBA. And, you know, the Raptors okay. have had a few all-NBA players in recent memory. Obviously, Pascal, Kyle's made one, DeMar's made one, Kawhi's made one. So, I mean... It's not like rare here like pe- people mm-hmm. do make all nba teams here but I-, I don't know i just feel like the way i feel like quickly kind of found something later in the season that he can carry over and i know that was a lot of that was without scotty and we still have to see them play together at the peak of their powers but yeah i just i don't know and you, you put rj in this conversation too but i feel like uh quickly is the better chance to be an all-star than rj that's just my opinion i mean Mm -hmm. they're 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 very similar in terms of um talent level so people might have a differing opinion on who would be the first all-star between the two but i don't know that's just my gut feeling i think i'd go quickly over scotty being all nba not to say that scotty won't be all nba in the future but Mm -hmm. we're talking next season i just i I'm going to pick quickly for the sake of this game. Still a lot of old farts taking up the back end of the All-NBA teams these days, right? Like Kevin Durant's still yeah. making it. LeBron's yeah. still making it. Like Steph's still making it. You know, those guys won't make it forever because, once again, time is unrelenting. But for now, they're there. I mean, Kawhi Leonard made it this year. That's an interesting one. Does like he hit the 65-game threshold again after this past season? Um, Anthony Davis, another guy who was really healthy this year, who isn't always healthy. So there will, there are always spots that open up on the second and third teams due to injury and the 65 game rule. If in fact that rule still exists beyond one year, as I know lots of people felt some kind of way about that rule. And I think justifiably so. Um, so yeah, you know, as hard as it is to make all NBA, I do think there are some spots that could be there for the taking, but look at the guys who finished just off the all NBA team who you know, had way more votes than Scotty Barnes. You have Jalen Brown, Paul George, Tyrese Maxey. Wemby's certainly going to make an All-NBA team next season, one would think. Yeah, Montero's there. It is tough. There's a lot of really good players in the NBA. You got you to gotta even think of a guy like John Moran, who basically missed the whole season. 100%. Like he's an, he's an yeah. All-NBA level type of player. So when he comes back next season, I would assume he would jump right back into that conversation. Yep, Embiid, if he gets the 65 games, which is always a question, but if he does, he's a no-doubter. Um, yeah, it, it, it's making All-NBA real hard in today's in today's modern league where there's just talent everywhere, and you got to be good as well, typically, to make an All-NBA team, at least a playoff team and not what the Raptors were this past season. So I understand the logic behind your pick of quickly here. I think I'm still going to go Scotty Barnes um, okay. because – Seen Scotty Barnes take a gigantic leap. And that's not to say that he's going to take another huge one. That's not to say that he needs to take one for him to be on the right track. Like it can be incremental, that can be less of a gigantic uh, across the board, oh my God, he's better at everything than he was a year before type of jump. But I think I- I'm pretty bullish on Scotty after the year he just had. And I think on a team where I think everyone's going to be kind of hungry to just play basketball and not sort of go through all of the rigmarole that this past season brought with uncertainty and guys kind of aware of what's going to happen here. Um, our guys going to be on the team. It's clearly Scotty's team now. I think that's going to embolden him. I think, you know, I, I put a lot of stock into just kind of playing with guys for longer than 10 game stretches at a time and what that can mean for the overall health of a team and the individual performance of those guys who are playing with one another. Um, and so I would think I would slightly lean Scotty. I just, I think it's really tough to make the all-star team in the Eastern conference. And I wonder if we see something like we saw with Tyrese Maxey with quickly where next season thrust into the point guard role for the full year, he makes a serious jump. Maybe he's even in a most improved player conversation, but Maxi kind of hit all-star, like no doubter all-star a year after his sort of first breakout in 2022-23. And so maybe that's sort of like the delay you're seeing with quickly, if that's what goes down. Obviously, different players, different contexts, different ages. But um, that's kind of my read on the situation as of right now. But uh, I, I think it's very possible that both of these things happen. Not the most likely outcome by any means, but like there's a world in which the team is pretty good 
quickly and Barnes are the two main sources of that goodness. And they get rewarded with an all-star in the form of quickly. Also Barnes as well is going to be one of those all-star spots. And so that makes quickly a little bit less likely to to think, well, they have two all-stars that feels kind of hard to, to see for me right now. Um, But if things go really well, they certainly could both make it. And then if things go really well, that might portend an all NBA for Scotty Barnes as well. Might be a little early for Barnes. He's only 22. We'll be 23 next season. So maybe it's another year before it all takes place. But I am uh, I'm pretty bullish on both of those dudes with a full season working together. And I think both things are on the table in a way that, um, you know, is maybe look. It's not super likely, but I think it's there as a possibility, which is fun. Um, Wait, side question for you, because are are we, for the hypothetical of this question, are we Mm -hmm. kind of looking RJ Barrett, like if you were to pick their next all-star, would it be quickly or Barrett, just your opinion? I think it's quickly, yeah. Like Barrett, I I think, because there's not a ton of like self-creation there, and that's like by design with his game now, like I, I think it's tough to be, sort of considered in the all-star tier if you're not someone who's like creating shots for others you don't rack up assists that type of stuff like it it could happen like if he plays like he did this past year there's an outside shot at it for sure like injury replacement sort of fringe all-star kind of consideration i I just think the team is going to be structured in a way where barnes and quickly are prioritized and barrett's going to benefit a lot from those guys being prioritized like they're he's going to leverage their own individual gravity into all kinds of buckets one would think considering how he played down the stretch i I just i don't know if full up like all-star upsides quite there for barrett but like if barrett's the player he was last season and is like 21 22 7 and 5 uh, or 7 and 4 on really good efficiency like there's certainly definitely be a case for it i I just think quickly and barnes are going to be the main hubs what about you uh, for me, I was picking quickly over Barrett. I just wanted to give yeah. a little bit of Barrett conversation in case he was being overlooked. Look, we love RJ Barrett. I, I, I would be very happy if uh, he, he proved me wrong. As he proved a lot of people wrong after he arrived in Toronto. I just kind of think, you know, the way he was used and the way he played this season, probably not all-star level. And I think that's like exactly how I want to see them use RJ Barrett going forward as well. So, um, you know, maybe he just kind of settles into like a really nice third guy role, which maybe you never be an all-star, but you become a really nice player for good teams over time, which is a pretty darn good thing to be. We'll come back on the other side, get into our final what's more likely related to the future of one Jakob Pertl. Figure he's going to be the starter on this team, but what if he's not? We'll get to that coming up in just one sec. Today's show is brought to you by Better Help. Look, it's just nice to have someone to talk to sometimes, right? We all got stuff going on. We all carry baggage from different things in our lives, different stressors, whether it's the little day-to-day stuff that life throws at you or perhaps some big trauma you're trying to process through and sort out so you can move on and, and, and become a better and more fulfilled person as a result. Therapy can really help you talk about the stuff you got to talk about, get the stuff out there. It's like a backlog sometimes. You just got to get it all out, sort through what you're feeling so you can make the decisions that best allow you to live your best life and feel like you're doing things in line with your values and all of that good stuff. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge, which is a really, really big deal. Get it off your chest with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. All right, back here. Final segment, Locked On Raptors. Jamar Hines is here. Before we get into our last what's more likely of the day, i got to tell you, Locked On Sports Today 24-7, our all-day streaming channel. Go subscribe to it, would you? It's a lovely thing. You have Locked On shows from the national side of things and the local experts covering the biggest stories in sports running all the live long day. Put it on while you work. Have it as background noise. Hell, just watch that and don't work. I don't care. It just... Go to it and subscribe. It's a lovely thing. Lockdown Sports Today, 24-7. Okay, Jamar, last what's more likely here for you. And look, this one maybe is not exactly in the spirit of the game because I think one of the outcomes I've laid out here is not terribly unlikely to happen. It feels probably like the chalk thing that could happen here, but we don't know. Like the the offseason is weird. The Raptors have all kinds of different avenues and things they can do. And, you know, I, I think some might argue Jakob Pertl is not an ideal perfect fit on this team long term. Um, I'm fine with it. I'll get into that in my answer to this question. But 
Let's get to it here. What's more likely? Jakob Pertl. Let's actually uh, amend this on the fly. What's more okay. likely? Jakob Pertl starts 75 plus games next year for the Toronto Raptors or somebody else does. What you got? This is essentially asking, do they replace Jakob Pertl this summer with someone who steps in and becomes a starter almost from day one? Um, again, this is maybe not my best work on the far ends of two uh, extremes of a spectrum kind of uh, types of questions here, but curious what you think. What's more likely? Jakob Pertl starts a hell of a lot of games next year or someone else fills his place? Okay, well, I just quickly pulled up Jakob Pertl's stats. Uh, Jakob Pertl started 50 games for the Raptors last season. Obviously, mm -hmm. he had two different injuries. Uh, he has only played 75 games twice in his career. His last year with the Raptors, he played all 82. His first year with the Spurs, he played 77. So I guess that is pushing things a little bit to the extreme, a little <laughs> bit with your – modification I've saved, within the, I've saved it on the fly hell yeah <laughs> within the play 75 games um and just because i i would assume he would start every game he would play if he's on the team so even with your modification i'm still going to go the chalk route and say yaka proto has a much better injury year mm. injury free year i should say and starts 75 games as opposed to someone else doing that because I just feel that that trade obviously has been much, much, much discussed. Mm -hmm. uh, the Raptors lost their draft pick this upcoming draft because of the Jakob Proto trade. And I feel because we have the same front office that made that trade, they're going to stick with that a little, at least a little bit longer. If it were like, say they were to clean house this off season or whatever, which they're not, but say they were to, it would, there'd probably be more likely a chance of, hmm. you know, Yaka Proto being moved, but because they're the ones that made that move, I feel like they're going to be more bullish and just stay with it and say, you know, we never really saw quickly Barrett Barnes and Proto all together. They, like as soon as they made the OG trade, Proto got hurt like three games into that new tenure. And then mm -hmm. he came back and then he got hurt again. So they're probably going to want to see, a little bit more of how that could actually work and is it actually viable for the future. So in that case, I will pick the like, Proto 75 games. A little bit chalk, but you made it a little bit better putting in the 75 game requirement because that's something Proto has not hit very much in his career. Yeah, I think here I'm with you, although I think it's worth examining the world in which Pirtle doesn't start all the games for the Raptors next season. Obviously, the injury sure. thing we can leave out. I, I, I think, you know, the, the reason that I think there's some uncertainty here. One, I know there are like some corners of Raptors internet who think like Jakob Pirtle doesn't fit and they have to move on from him. I think moving on from Jakob Pirtle without like an actual ready-made replacement is a terrible idea. Um, I think he's also not so good that you can't draft like a prospect big and have him eventually take the reins from Pirtle down the line. You don't need to move Pirtle to allow for that to happen. And I think you, you run the risk of just not playing functional basketball if Jakob Pirtle is not on this team next year. He's very good at what he does. He's not a perfect player by any means. He's not a top 10 center like Masai Ujiri tried to lie and tell us a year and a half ago, but He's a good player who does a lot of things for this team specifically with the elbow creation, with the rim protection that he provides that nobody else on this roster even comes close to, um, you know, with the, the finishing around the rim, all that, the really, really excellent screen setting, which keeps on being sort of, uh, I think, underrated in the conversation about Pirtle. He's a damn good screen setter, one of the best in the NBA for my money. And he was like the slingshot that led RJ Barrett to a million buckets at the rim just sending him around a portal screen, catching on the run and scoring. Like it's not as easy if you're not getting those really hard, nasty portal screens to go and do that. And so um, like the reasons to replace portal, I, I don't see like a huge glaring need for it right now. Um, if you can find an obvious upgrade, sure. And, and a way you might be able to do that is via free agency. We know they're going to have cap space if they choose to have it right with the Bruce Brown, Gary Trent Jr. decisions looming. They can get up to like 28, 29 million bucks in cap space after not keeping their first round pick. And so, you know, does that mean they throw their name in the ring for Isaiah Hartenstein or Nick Claxton? 
kind of two biggest free agent bigs. Claxton, I don't think, starts over Pirtle. And frankly, I don't think they should be going after Claxton. I think his offensive game is super limited. And I don't think he really fits on this team, especially next to Scotty Barnes. But if you look at Hartenstein, like kind of a fake three-point shooter, but he can do it a little bit and was an absolute monster of a defender this year at carrying a huge minutes load for the Knicks. I think you, you could talk me into signing Hartenstein and having him being the starter going forward. I, I just think if that's the case, like, you know, you have to probably move Pirtle in order to make it make sense financially to have Hartenstein and Olinick and Pirtle all making what they'll be making. If that seems like a lot of money to invest in three front court spots when you have other needs elsewhere. And so, um, you know, a lot has to happen for Pirtle not to be the starter on this team. And I, I'm curious what you think about this sort of comparison, Jamar. I think I've mentioned it on the show before. Apologies for if I'm repeating myself, but. Pirtle to me feels a lot like Jonas Valanciunas did around this time last decade, where a lot of good stuff, kind of imperfect, bit matchup dependent, but you're not just going to move him for the sake of moving him. You move him for an upgrade at the right time, and it makes some sense, but you can survive with him as your starting center in the meantime. Pirtle's probably not the center on this team when they want to get real serious to go and contend, but that doesn't mean he has to be moved right away because the fit's not picture perfect would you agree with that no i do agree with that and i also and i'm just reiterating that i still think that messiah company wants to see per, how proto fits with the new the new additions they made mid, mid-season because like i said they didn't get a lot of run together so that would be my reasoning for this current season for him to just to, to, to stay the course but yeah, I totally, I totally agree. If you're getting serious down the line, being a real contender, Jakoproto's probably not your center. But I think for now, to be the like the bridge player, I guess he would be. I think it's mm-hmm. okay. I think totally, and, and like he does a lot of things that help the Raptors lean into their strengths, right? Like he, with his elbow creation, with his extra passing, like he allows Darko Ball to flourish. Those elbow sets right. they ran last year was like half their playbook, and it was some of their very best stuff. Um, obviously, Scotty can do elbow stuff as well, and there are some bit concerns because of the lack of shooting you have to work around, but like you want to slingshot Barrett to the rim? Pirtle's your guy to help do that. You want to run clean pick and roll with Emmanuel quickly or orchestrating things? Pirtle's the guy you do that with. He's got roll gravity. He can finish beautifully. You want to be a rim pressure team? The Raptors were a great rim pressure team last season, top 10 in the league in terms of rim frequency. And a lot of that is Pirtle gets a lot of shots in close, and he creates a lot of shots for others in close because of the way he sends players moving downhill. Um, You'd like to see a little bit more from Quickly, for example, in terms of at rim frequency and all of that, but I don't think you get there by moving Yaka Pirtle out. I think he can be an agent of helping to do that. Um, and so, yeah, I I think it's not perfect in an ideal world. Every team in the NBA has a center who can shoot threes, but that's not feasible because there are only so many guys who can do that. I think they're way better off if they want a longer term succession plan at the position, draft someone who might project to shoot down the line or, you know, keep your eye out on free agent additions or whatever. But, um, there's no need to go and replace Pirtle because he's not picture perfect right now in this team right now. Like that's not what this team is in the need of that's not the cycle the part of their cycle that they're at they just got to play some competent basketball and start building something and yaka Pertle is a perfect player if you want to go and play some competent basketball um any last parting shots here jamar before we wrap things up and if not anything you want to plug for the good people out there uh no parting shots regarding the three topics uh you can follow me at jamar bh j-a-m-a-r-b-h on twitter um it's off season for me, so I don't really have anything kicking. But you know, if you want to see any sad tweets about the Nuggets being out of the playoffs, I think I'm a little. Oh, no. I think I'm, I think I'm over this at this point. But it's been a few days. But yeah, you can follow me. Yeah, uh, everyone, go follow Jamar and all of his wonderful stuff. Yeah, the God of the Game recap is in summertime. Is there going to be muscle watch from you as you like get your uh, your recap fingers back in in, in gear, like <laughs> some, around August? Are you going to see the old man typing the most words per minute of his life? Is that going to be a thing sometime soon? I will get a little bit of practice when um, summer league rolls around. I'll get a hmm. get a little bit of you know dust up the old laptop, get some recaps in in that sense. But yeah, uh, they still work. I think they still work. Hell yeah. I have, I have uh, faith in these. 
I just got the screenshot for today's episode. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. Thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We'll be back again on Friday. Probably going to do something draft related. Maybe I'll get a guest. Maybe I'll talk about some draft guys I like because uh, there's plenty of those dudes to talk about. So you have that to look forward to on Friday. We'll be back again next week. Just a heads up. I know people are itching now that the all NBA teams are out. We have everything we need to do the over unders uh, take up and decide who won between myself, Sahal, and Vivek, and also decide who won among you, the listeners. We will do that probably sometime in late June or July as our pal Big V is traveling to cover the Cricket World Cup for the next three weeks. We don't want to bother him with an overlong over unders podcast. So uh, we will get to that. It'll be a little treat to look forward to as we get deeper into the off season. It's not going anywhere. We will award a winner. Well before next season, obviously, but the over-unders uh, review episode coming up a little bit later than we would typically do. We would usually do it around this time of year. So uh, just so programming note for people there. We will leave it there. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll be back again on Friday to talk about the draft in some way, shape, or form. Till then, thanks so much for hanging. I lost my basketball. Oh, no, this is terrible. I'm going to shoot my wallet instead. Bye-bye. What the hell? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs>